Hello, I'm Terry Brett from Pyramid Gallery in York, and uh, we're going to have a, a Zoom discussion with Michael Barrett and Trevor Price, both printmakers who used to share a studio in uh, London. Uh, Trevor's now in St. Ives. Um, and I think, first of all, before, well, just say hello. Hello, Michael, where are you? Hello there, Terry. Um, I'm at my uh, home in North London at the moment, painting from home today. So. And Trevor, you're in? Terry, yeah. Um, to be uh, very uh, specific, I'm in my daughter's best, best internet there, apparently. So, but yes, I'm in St Ives in Cornwall. Lovely. Before we talk uh, with Michael and Trevor, I want to show you the actual show. So, um, if you if you follow me, Fee is operating the camera. Follow me, Fee. Hello. And um, right on the wall here, we've got two lino prints. The top one is bottles, pots, and dots, and this is set in St Ives. And then the bottom one is um, Hepworth and the one the moonlit palms. So Hepworth seems to feature quite a lot in in the show. Um, and on the stairs is Chop Waves, and this is one of the new big pieces that's done with Dremel onto a polycarbonate sheet, and uh, Trevor's going to be talking about that to us later. And behind me is uh, one of the latest in um, the Artist Dog series, and this one's a woodcut by Michael Barrett, and it's obviously Damien has a dog. And further up. We've got Edward Hopper's dog, so it's just a, a, a revisit of uh, the famous um, picture called Nighthawks. And we've got the imagined dog. And that's a screen print. And another screen print above is uh, Wes Anderson's dog, Hoover Building 2. So Michael's done several versions of a Wes Anderson's dog featuring famous iconic buildings. And here we have Hepworth's Garden, another of Trevor's using the Dremel on the polycarbonate sheet. And the sister print to this, Hepworth's Garden 2, featured in the Royal Academy Summer Exhibition this year. That's a beautiful print. And I'll take that and we'll go and look through the back room. And Trevor's woodland prints are also available in these smaller versions. £240 in the frame. And we've, we've put up here one of um, an earlier etching of Trevor's. That's called The Angel and the Av Aviator. One of Michael's most uh, popular or quickest selling prints was um, Hockney's dog in the small version, which was an etching. And then he's revisited that with some screen prints. And this is the, the final one of those. The others have sold out. So this is uh, Hockney's dog, the biggest splash. I don't think there's many of those left. And uh, something I found that we we had up in the in the in the stockroom is uh, one of um, Trevor's early etchings on plas plaster, the boat builders. I was always a big fan of that range. And Michael's Darley's dog. That's an etching, hand colored. And then we've got several of Michael's new screen prints or wood blocks and this one's we've got it listed as a screen print it's hard to tell just looking at it and that's um Derek Jarman in his garden at Dungeness so he's planted a garden on the pebbles and uh he's watering them obviously this is called the surgeon's photograph the faking of Loch Ness Monster. So uh, while the surgeon is taking his famous photograph of the monster, the model, um, 
Michael imagines that actually they were missing the fact that there was a Loch Ness Monster actually in the lot behind them. Van Gogh's dog, that's a screen print. And we have Van Gogh painting A Starry Night, another screen print. And this one is depicting uh, the way that uh, Van Gogh is uh, reputed to have lit his canvas. So he put candles around his, the brim of his hat while he was painting at night. It's a very nice one, uh, very nice one. And here we have, this is the only painting we've got in the show and it's by Trevor and it's, um, it's set in St. Ives and it's called Palms and Pots. Going to the other room. Oh, on the stairs here, we have uh, a few of the uh, smaller artist dogs. So we've got Netch in there, we've got Rembrandt number three, we've got Eric Revillius dog. Uh, the, the dog is actually a chalk painting on the hills as the train's going by. Um, we've got Sybil Andrews dog. I think that one's nearly sold out. And we've got Magritte's dog. And in the front room, let's have a look, first of all, at Richmond Park. Uh, Michael's going to talk a bit about this later on. Um, this is uh, an etching. Um, it's based on Bruegel, it's reimagined, so the original picture was this, and Michael's going to talk about why he did these. He did a series of four. Um, so in the original we have uh, the hunters in the snow returning with their dogs, and Michael's found a similar landscape in London, and um, we've got the dog walkers. And... We've got a herd of deer being chased by a dog, which Michael will mention earlier. The dog's called Fenton. It was a U YouTube meme at the time, which you can look up if you Google Richmond Park, Fenton and deer. You should find this, what he's referring to. And looking around here, Try not to get the reflections. So we've got Matisse's dogs, and that's a wood block. And we have Woodland Walk, which is another of Trevor's large scale monochrome dry points, or I suppose uh, um, they, they, they are dry points. And that's rather magnificent. People really come into the gallery and go, wow, when they see those. Um, two more in um, Michael's Bruegel series. We've got three altogether here, so one of them has sold out. And incidentally, the Richmond Park one uh, sold out at the Royal Academy Summer Show. And we have, re this is based on Return of the Herd. And Michael's found scene that suits the, the picture and he's replaced the cows with bicycles and this one is Primrose Hill Summer and the, the original was called The Harvesters they all sat there having their lunch and Michael's placed his own family having a picnic on Primrose Hill so those are both etchings, and that's the show. Uh, this is being shown in conjunction with a glass show, uh, which has been going since um, April, actually. We've been topping it up with work by Peter Layton from London Glass Blowing, and it looks fantastic. That's two more Peter Laytons, and some pieces by Lane Row. And these lovely feather pieces, quill and ink, lovebirds, those are called. They're by Lane Row as well. 
And now we'll go back to the discussion. That's the show we've got on at the moment. We've been showing your work now for nearly 28 years here, which is when I took over. Um, so that was in 1994. And uh, I came upon the both of you through Greenwich Printmakers. When I took over the gallery, there weren't any pictures in here at all. And I had an interest in original prints. So I asked Greenwich Printmakers to put on a show. And um, through them, we met uh, Anita Klein, we met Brenda Hartill, and uh, at some point we met Trevor. And um, so uh, first of all, let's, let's talk about when did you two meet? Uh, Trevor. Well, was it that long ago, 28, 30 years ago? Um, I had a studio in Clink Street, which is uh, down by Borough Market, on the, uh, right by the Thames um, in London. And this was at uh, a time before Tate Modern had actually opened. And we were sort of within a stone's throw of what then became the Tate Modern. And I needed a studio mate to help pay the rent. So um, Michael replied to an advert. And we've, uh, well, until I moved to St. Ives, we've been sharing a studio ever since for God knows how many years. When Michael didn't have grey hair and I had more hair. Yeah. <laughs> and Michael, you, 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 saw an you saw an advert and answered it. What, what attracted you to the advert? I did. Well, uh, um, I, it was an advert in um, uh, this magazine called The Artist Newsletter, which we used to all uh, avidly read through every week. Uh, There's mostly just for the ads, to be honest. Occasionally there'd be you know, presses for sale or, or you know, the, like this studio, studio shares. And uh, I just saw an advert that, uh, that said uh, this person needed uh, someone to share an etching studio. And I just thought I was using a communal studio at the time. And, I, and it, was, it was at the end of a really particularly bad day when, when there'd been uh, uh, tons of people in there and all very disorganized and things. And I just thought, oh, my God, this is just horrible. And uh, I saw this advert and I thought, oh, well, this could be this could be good. And so I went along the next day and uh, um, and I think I was the first person that, uh, that that Trevor met and he unwisely just just said yes right away without <laughs> waiting, to, <laughs> waiting to, to see who else would come along. Uh, I've regretted it ever since. <laughs> <laughs> so you, um, you've spent a, a big portion of your entire careers in, in the shared studio. So in case it didn't come across, first one was in Clink Street in the actual Clink. Yeah, that was the prison, and um, and then uh, into uh, the the one in um, Blue Anchor Lane, Lane near Rotherhithe. Mm. Um, so, um, you, both of you during those times, you, you a lot of your work has been uh, mostly about people or, or the dogs, and much of this has a, a big element of humour. Um, since working hundreds of miles apart, you've broadened your repertoires, uh, Trevor into still life, monochrome seascapes, a treescape, my, Michael into cultural maps and homages to great artists. So uh, my next question is that uh, when you were working close together in a, in a studio, developing new ideas, how important was it to try and make each other laugh? Pretty crucial share a sense of uh definitely share a sense of humor and uh um uh yeah it was a uh it was it was a very uh jolly studio back then it's quite quiet now because i'm still in the studio of course and trevor uh comes uh, you know about one week every two or three months something like that he comes comes along to the studio and still works there um but for the most part i'm i'm on my own with uh um with you know, occasionally uh, um, there's there's a, a um, an, an artist uh, um, who does like lino cuts who, who comes in. She probably only comes in one day a week, max. and then the printmakers council work out of there as well. So I see them on uh, on Wednesday afternoons. But other than that, it's really just me and my and my printer in there. So Trevor, did yeah, did you did you find that the humour between you two informed your work at the time? Uh, possibly. I mean, Michael and I, we sort of, um, you, you know, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, at least I feel there's, there's some grown ups out there that I find slightly intimidating. And then there's the rest of us. And I actually put you in this category as well, Terry. You know, we sort of, 
you just relax in people's company. And uh, Michael's definitely one of those people. And so we sort of regress to sort of childish, bo boyish humour, you know. Um, but it's so refreshing. And um, I'm amazed we haven't got any work done, actually. But, uh, <laughs> but at that point, our, our work for both of us was full of humour, um, you know. And, uh, and it, was a, it was a really special time, actually. You know, yeah, since I, um, what has changed since we we don't share a studio now it may have changed anyway it's difficult to know you could always overthink mm. these things but what mm. I do know is that the work I do now is uh, the sort of nature of it is quite quiet and and I sort of have to really concentrate on it and I, perhaps I couldn't have done that when we shared a studio so my, my, my work would have been different there's no doubt about it you know mm. around you you know I, I certainly always always felt this whenever I came to visit, um, but it, it, it was always a funny situation anyway, trying to park the car outside the, the clink and unload work or pick, pick work, work, work up because you were up to two stories, if I remember, with great heavy doors. Um, it was, uh, it, it, you, you, had to, you had to find it funny or else you wouldn't be able to do that. And there was always... <laughs> And there was always this, there was always laughter whenever I, I visited you. And uh, it's, it's, um, it was always re very refreshing. And um, uh, yeah, it's been, it's been good for the, good for the gallery. Um, I, I, I don't want to uh, get too, too serious about art. I mean, it is, it is a serious business, but if you've got some humor in art, um, it, it, it really does add another dimension to it. Um, mm. It needs to be good in other ways as well, and it is, and, and it's, it's always worked very well. Um, so, uh, Trevor, you, you started talking about there that uh, you have a, a quieter moments in the studio which enable you to concentrate on this new work. So just describe what you're actually doing when you're doing those, uh, those big... Um, seascapes or woodland walks what, what what are you actually working with yeah they do take a long time actually terry so my uh, uh, the, the surface that i use I, I print off a polycarbonate sheet so it's a big piece of plastic really and i use a dremel as my tool to carve and the dry point needle which is a um, sort of pointed bit of metal really and i scratch the surface and i carve away to create the image and then i roll um I just roll black ink over the surface. So it's, a, it's, a, it's a quite a simple process. It's a relief print in the same way that we all did uh, liner cuts at school, except I'm, instead of a liner tool, I'm using a Dremel to carve away um, and then sending it through an etching press. But the, 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 the difficulty with it is that you can't really see what you're doing. It just, take, it just takes, it's quite a methodical, detailed process. Um, I'll, I'll carve away and I'll, I'll try to complete the whole thing. So I might be working on the plate for six or eight weeks before I actually print the first proof. So, um, yeah, and then just hope that I've done something that's more or less working. And then obviously I do a bit more to it as I'm then I print it and change it and fiddle around. Um, but, yeah, it's a, it's a slow old process. But I quite enjoy it, actually. I like the methodical element of that, yeah. And um, I, I mean, they, they're very successful in, in terms of uh, people when they see them, they just go, wow. Um, not everyone has got room for a, a, a big one of those um, on, the, on their walls, but uh, there's certainly, um, uh, there's a lot of interest in them. Well, I would say, Terry, actually along those lines, and this is both for Michael and I, the, the, the techniques and the process within printmaking is hugely important to both of us. When, you know, amongst the sort of uh, laughter in the studio, we would always be talking about um, techniques, process, um, different ideas. Uh, we'd be bouncing ideas off each other. Uh, um, and, you know, the, the same goes for Michael. If you sort of uh, try to work out how he's done his silk screens, there's this massive overlaying of colours that is technically really, really challenging um, in a in a way that's different to my printmaking, but mine as, as well. We've both sort of honed our craft over those 30 years, 35 mm, yeah. years, you know, you know? And
and you you do eventually if you keep plugging away you get quite good at it <laughs> yeah one of one of my questions here uh, uh, was about uh, printmaking um the, about the demanding side of it but you mm. both paint um where does uh painting fit into your like your whole whole career i mean let's start with michael on that one Painting is actually um, is is as important as the as the printmaking uh, um, creatively. I mean, it, it's not um, as as a business. I I, I am primarily uh, um, a printmaker. I, I spend most of my time doing that. But the um, but but I generate a lot of uh, of new ideas and things through the painting and the painting because I do them in two completely different locations. They. Um, Paintings end up feeling almost more like a hobby, uh, um, you know. Whereas, whereas the printmaking, I, I, you know, kind of knuckle down and I enjoy doing it. But, but it is very much like, you know, I go to the studio, so I'm going to work uh, um, when I, when I, when I go to the printmaking studio. Whereas, uh, if I'm working from home, then I'm, uh, um, you know, I'm, I'm just kind of having fun, just playing around with, uh, with oil paint. Um, but, but uh, yeah, I do. I, quite often, if I have an idea for a, a new idea for something, I, I will try it as a uh, as a painting first. And and Trevor, did you uh, did you paint when you were studying art? <laughs> well, uh, I, I studied printmaking, but I did a foundation course, which is what everyone did. And sort of halfway through my foundation course, I thought, right, I want to do an uh, an a BA in um, in painting. And uh, the tutors suggested that perhaps I should do printmaking, which uh, on that day I was really frustrated with, but I'm so pleased now. Yeah. Yes. So um, yeah. there was a thing actually at the end of uh, the printmaking course, because it, it was so technical, we used to look over at the room with the painters uh, and they, I felt that they were sort of cooler and one step ahead because they were, they were freer with what they were doing. We were still wrapped up in technique. So it took quite a few years to then catch up with them again, actually, because because we were um, the technique takes a while to master, you know. Um, but now, as Michael said, I I like him do paint as well. There are obviously less of them, and um, uh, but they're an important part of the process always. Yeah. And and is your painting done at home or in the studio? No, I can't paint at home. I've got. Uh, it's too distracting for me. I, I, it's all done in the studio for me. But the studio now is actually a minute's walk across the road from the house. It's really simple. Wonderful, yeah. Um, when when um, you were living in London, Trevor, uh, a lot of your prints included a, 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 some sort of reference to St. Ives or, or somewhere in Cornwall. Um, maybe a picture on the wall of St. Ives Bay. Um, so you, you must have been pining for it when you were in London. And uh, you've been back there now for, I think you said, six years. So uh, I mean, you must be pining now for London, surely. You're so far away. Yeah, I am sometimes, yeah. I don't miss London, actually, but I do miss my mates. I miss Michael, actually. You know, I miss the sort of that banter and things, you know. You can't replicate that, you know, I, I do miss that. We come back and do the art fairs and hang out a bit, but uh, yeah. So you've got the best of both worlds then? Yeah, uh, just about. I mean, I suppose you could say that, or you could say that I struggle with all of it, but uh, it's pretty good, yeah. Can't complain. <laughs> um, Michael, your, your um, new series of four large screen print homages to Bruegel, they're quite a dramatic change uh, quite detailed. Imagine Bruegel to have visited London in the 2020s and you've painted in his style some of your favourite views. Um, they've sold well at the, the uh, summer show, um, which is nice. Uh, did, you, did you expect that? And, and what led you in this direction? Well, that they... Um... That all came from a uh, from a trip to uh, Vienna. Actually, I did a I did a trip with a friend to uh, um, to go and visit. There was a there was a really properly once in a lifetime exhibition of Bruegel's work, 
at the uh, Kunstisterisch uh, uh, Museum in uh, um, in Vienna, and so I went there to uh, um, to see it. And um, and I'd always liked Bruegel, but but he wasn't um, he wasn't one of my absolute kind of foundation artists, uh, you know. But but I, um, I I went along because my my friend was so was so keen on it primarily. But then I was completely converted. I was just blown away by him. He's just now he's literally one of my favorite painters. Um, and we um, we spent uh, we spent over six hours the first day just uh just in the exhibition um and uh but you couldn't you you actually couldn't leave and re-enter on the same day so we um so we we didn't even go to the to, to the loo or get or get a coffee we just literally were six six and a half hours just looking at Bruegel paintings and um and it really just completely got under my skin and um and the drawing that i i did a drawing for um, for richmond park while i was still in vienna and i came back and they're actually the the four of them are actually etchings they're not uh, they're not screen prints they're, oh, they're um, etchings. oh yeah right. yeah yeah, yeah the multi, multi-plate etchings so um uh and i just i came back and i did one i i initially um, I, I didn't have, um, I didn't have uh, plans to do a series of them. I just wanted to, to just try the one. And so I, so I did the one, but then I thought, well, actually setting, uh, you, you know, se- setting, um, Bruegel's seasons in, uh, in London parks just really appealed to me. And so I just went touring around and, uh, and found the, the proper vistas in each one and, uh, and did the drawings and, uh, and uh, yeah, and then did, did the series. And as you say, the first the first one got into the summer exhibition, and I gave them I, think I gave them seventy to sell, and they um, and they sold them in three days, which was lovely. So which one? Which one was the first one? Richmond Park was the first one. Yeah. Yeah. So let's just look back at that again. Yeah, yeah. That's one of the uh, one of the last ones. And About- just uh, just tell us what 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 are. Uh, what are they doing? So we've got dog walkers. In fact, yeah, basically, one of the dog walkers is is walking um, Damien Hurst's dog. <laughs> <laughs> so um, in the in the um, in the Bruegel painting, it's called Hunters in the Snow, and it's these men returning home after a fairly unsuccessful trip hunting. They're they're carrying little tiny game birds and things. I think they haven't they haven't had a particularly successful um trip. So it's kind of a it's it's a it's a wonderful but quite a grim painting. Um but mine, yeah, I changed mine to dog walkers. But then I've got I've also got in the middle ground, I've got I don't know if um if uh, if you know about this, but there was a there was this thing on the internet about the this dog called Fenton, who um in Richmond Park um, uh, he there was a, there was this video that went viral. Uh, this 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 man's dog Fenton got away from him, and it actually created a stampede of deer in uh, Richmond Park. And so that's uh, that's the man chasing Fenton and chasing the deer in the middle ground there. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. So we've got the deer, and there and there is <laughs> <here's> Fenton. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm glad you've. Uh... Glad you mentioned that. It's um, <laughs> that's brilliant. It's worth seeking it out on YouTube. It's a very funny video, actually. Oh, it's yeah, it is a hilarious. <laughs> okay, I'm going to look if, that out. Yeah, if you search yeah. Fenton Richmond Park, you'll find. It. Okay, we'll do that now. I want to ask you a bit about the Royal Society of Painter Printmakers. So uh, you've both been long-term <clears throat> associates and fellows. So if you're a fellow, you can put RE after your name and you've both been elected to official positions. So, so how, how important has that organisation been, Trevor? Uh, yeah, it's hugely important, actually. I mean, uh, uh, first of all, as a young printmaker, I think I was elected when I was 28 or something like that. It's a real honour to be part of this organisation. It's, uh, it's not something to take for granted. It's quite difficult to be a member and some people, some very good printmakers, um, apply many times before they actually get in the organisation. <clears throat> it's, it's there to promote original printmaking. Um, and especially nowadays with printmaking, sort of uh, with reproductions and all sorts going on, it's... Uh, it's um, its role is more important than ever. It's really a historical society as well. 
Um, it's been there, Michael knows the history better than I do, but um, uh, there's some fantastic past members. I'll let Michael talk about that bit actually. But in terms of now, it's a great voice for printmaking. Um, uh, and um, yes, it's, it's yeah. very important. It's home is the yeah. bank side, let's say London. The bank, the bank side gallery, the, mm. which was near Clink Street, wasn't it? It was mm. just. Yeah, Mike, yeah Mike, Michael, do you want to add anything in there? Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, it's been hugely important to me too. I um, I wasn't elected when I, I hadn't pulled my first etching until I was 30. So uh, um, so I was not elected at 28. I was older than that when I, uh, when I got, um, got elected. But, uh, um, but it's, yeah, it's been hugely important for me too. I mean, the society's been going since 1880 and it, I, um, it was actually set up uh, um, originally um, as a, um, a, in defiance of the Royal Academy because the Royal Academy um, refused to hang original prints in the summer exhibition. So the Royal Society of Painter Printmakers was created to, uh, to promote to printmaking. And uh, and so they could have their own their own exhibitions. And of course now um, you know the the um, the RA um, uh, one of the most important things in the in the summer exhibition is the uh, is the print room. So it's uh, um, you know it's changed completely now. But that's when it was uh, would have set up for that reason. Wonderful. Um, well, I think that we've covered quite a lot here. If uh, if 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 there's anything else you want to um, add in to the discussion, just, um, just, just do so. Um, it's, a, it, it's a great pleasure to have your work in, in here. It's always, it's always nice. Whenever I ask either of you if you would take part in an exhibition, you're always, you're always positive, always um, encouraging. <laughs> and uh, um, up, up, up here away from London, it's, uh, it, it, it's not... It's not always easy to sell uh, pictures of, of any of any sort. Um, you have to be uh, quite a high profile gallery to guarantee it. But you've um, you've certainly added a lot to to Pyramid Gallery and uh, and and uh, both both financially and culturally and um, as an inspiration. And uh, you've got quite a following in York now, um, which is lovely. Um, so uh, I, I want to thank you for doing this show because it's a, it's our fortieth anniversary of the gallery, and um, it's uh, it's it's very nice to to be able to to put such a good show on, and um, I encourage people to come and look. We've got two weeks left. Come and come and see it. Um, we've we've put this this uh, exhibition on in in quite a challenging uh, time. Um, it's uh, coming, having come out of the pandemic, um, we've then had uh, all kinds of problems associated with that. So York relies on tourists. Um, and it, to be honest, it's quite quiet in that respect. But um, fortunately, we don't rely on tourists. We rely on our, our local support and, uh, and also visitors who come from all over the country. So we get visitors from London, visitors from Scotland, all parts, and um, and, and also quite a few regular visitors from from abroad. Mm -hmm. So it's it's been um, it's it's been reasonably good year for, for us. And I think I think that when people come in here and they see see this wonderful show and they just go wow, they they are more likely to stay a bit longer, which is is what we're after. Um, yeah, thank you for doing it, and um, oh, thank you, Ted. Uh, we um, should... I, we've um, I I know that uh, um, that that Trevor and I both we we've always loved showing at your gallery. It's always one of my favorite places to show, actually. So yeah, it's ne it's never uh, um, it, it's never a tough decision when you uh, ask me to be part of an exhibition. I'm just always right there. It's a lovely space, and I and I think you curate it really well, actually. Too, you've got uh, you've always got such interesting things, not just the wall art, but you've got uh, the glass and the jewelry and everything. It's it's quite it's quite an incredible place and ceramics. It's lovely. And, That's uh, lovely but, and any of the other galleries that we uh, stock, but uh, you're our favourite. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I I I couldn't quite hear all of that. <laughs> 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 just as well, just as well, because he's going to get himself in trouble. I'll, I'll listen hard 
when we play this back. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um, the, the pictures won't go, although the show finishes in two weeks and that uh, we, we devote the whole of the upstairs to a big glass exhibition with the Contemporary Glass Society. But the pictures, the pictures won't go. Some of, them will, some of them will go back eventually, but uh, we'll, we'll keep them on the stairwells and uh, we're, we've always got a, a, a good supply of uh, both Michael and Trevor's work in here, even if, uh, even if they're not immediately visible. So um, thank you for that. And uh, we shall, I'll, I'll look forward to next time I see you, which uh, be when I come down to London, Michael. And sometime I will make it down to St. Ives, Trevor. I'll hey. knock on your door. You're always welcome, Terry. Thank you. You're always welcome. So thank you for thank you for doing this. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Thank you.